I'm Sylvia Favaro. I'm a researcher at TVG Group at Imperial College London. In this series of videos, we will show you how we test electrochemical technologies at the laboratory scales. This video will focus on the gas diffusion electric. When testing electrocatalysts, three setups are mainly used. The rotating disc electrode, the gas diffusion electrode, and the membrane electrode assembly. The gas diffusion electrode is an intermediate testing stage between the rotating disc electrode, which is fast and easy but far away from a real device, and a membrane electrode assembly, which is the most representative of a real device but time consuming to operate and optimize. A gas diffusion electrode essentially combines the two technologies. Various designs exist, but all are made up of the same essential components. Here we will demonstrate a commercially available setup. This setup is composed by two same chambers separated by the working electrode. Here, the working electrode is composed of a gas diffusion layer, generally carbon paper, where the catalyst is deposited. To deposit the catalyst, we first make the catalyst ink. This is made by combining the catalyst powder, solvent, and a polymer that acts as a binder. This is then sonicated to disperse the catalyst. Normally, the catalyst is deposited by spray coating on a carbon paper. It is then left to dry and is ready to use. The gas diffusion setup is composed of two chambers, separated by the working electrode, which is, as we see, the catalyst coated carbon paper. As you can see on the video, on the right hand side, we have the gas chamber in yellow, where the glass is, is blown. While on the, left, on the left hand side in white is the liquid chamber, which is filled with electrolyte and works very similarly to the free electrode setup, which is used in the rotating disc electrode. The carbon paper is porous and hydrophobic, which ensures the transport of gases to and from the catalyst surface, while stopping liquid from flooding the gas chamber. The two chambers can be separated, allowing us to change the working electrode. Once the working electrode is positioned with the catalyst layer facing the liquid chamber, the gas flow is connected to the gaseous chamber and the liquid chamber can be filled with aqueous electrolyte. In the electrolyte is then positioned the current electrode and the reference electrode. The counter electrode can be made of platinum, gold or glassy carbon and has a role of closing the current circuit. For example, in the case of the oxygen evolution in acidic condition, the current electrode is where the protons and electrons produced by oxygen evolution in the working electrode recombine to produce hydrogen. The reference electrode is an electrode with a stable and well-known electrode potential. It is used to control the potential applied to the working electrode. Similarly to the free electrode setup, the potential measured at the working electrode is against a stable reference and refers only to the reaction happening at the working electrode. We can now connect each electrode to the correct lead and start the experiment. In this case, transport cannot be controlled by rotating the working electrode, but in the case of gas-consuming reaction, transport is much faster. This is because the gas is supplied directly and does not need to diffuse through the liquid electrolyte. For this reason, much higher currents can be achieved in the gas confusion electrode compared to rotating disc electrodes, as the reaction rate is limited by kinetics rather than transport. For the same reason, the current increases exponentially with the applied potential.